to Litigation Help. My name is Heather Ferdinand, and today I'm going to talk about child support in Ontario. So I'm so happy to welcome back our regular guests um, for Family Law, Laura Garcia and Eva DiGio Marino. Laura is a family mediator, and Eva is both a mediating family lawyer, and both are from the Family Mediation Group. And if you're new here, be sure to check out their previous videos on this channel as well. And they also have their own channel uh, called Love, Divorce and Everything. I will have the links in the description box below. So don't forget to check that out. So welcome both. Thank you so much. So here. happy to be here again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay, so um, can you just give us sort of the basics about child support? Sure. So I can start off. Um, child support is essentially payment, financial payment, from one parent to the other. What this is meant to do is it's meant to equalize between the two parents the financial responsibilities of taking care of children. So all parents in Ontario, whether you're a step parent or a biological parent, have an obligation to take care of their children financially. And so child support is one of those mechanisms that the law says when you are separated or no longer living together, um, that comes into place to equalize the financial burden between two people or between parents. So the law says that anybody who stands in the position of a parent is responsible for financially supporting the children. Now, when determining who is the payor, there are a number of steps to determine who is the payor. Laura and I do this all the time in our practice. The first step is to figure out what is the children's schedule. Mm -hmm. Once we know the children's schedule, that will determine who is the payor. Uh, oh, so is the uh, child support, is the amount dependent on how much time, um, the parenting time is? So is it proportional to that? Um, so child support is dependent on how much time you spend with the children. In Ontario, there is a saying, and the saying is whether you have 40% of the time with your child or not. That's because 40% is a threshold under the law. Child support is calculated one of two ways. If one person has less than 40% time with the children, then we use one type of calculation. If both parents have at least 40% time with the children, then they fall into what's called shared parenting and there's a different calculation. So that's why when we are in a mediation, for example, first we ask the parent, well, what is the schedule? From there, we count how many overnights each parent has with the children. Now you can count it in overnights per month, or the law even says that you can count it in overnights per year. So you have to hit 40%. If you don't, that's fine. The person who doesn't is the payor. If they both do, then we have to cal calculate the child support obligations for both people. I've, I've, I often hear people, uh, lawyers, um, talk about something called Section 7. Like, there's always a lot of, like, arguments. And stuff. What, what is this thing about Section 7 expenses? Uh, Section 7 expenses are expenses that are generally on top. So they're, there's, there's, they're called special and extraordinary expenses. So these expenses are generally on top of the of the uh, of the child support amount that's payable per month, and they refer to expenses such as um, um, extracurricular activities for the children, childcare um, that parents may need in order to go to work, or there's a disability or an illness, or they they go to a training, uh, so they do need that childcare, um, medical and dental. So that are not usually covered for the child, that are not usually covered by OHIP or the parents' respective uh, dental and health benefit plans, um, and and post secondary education. So those, in a in a nutshell, simplistically, actually, mm -hmm. uh, are what's what are considered Section Seven expenses. Um, there is a depth of of, uh, of uh, discussions regarding Section Seven expenses because, as you can imagine. 
Um, uh, some parents may see it fit for a child to be enrolled in a particular sport or uh, be in need of a particular um, item, uh, whether, whether the, whereas the other parent may see something differently. So that is why when there is an expense considered under the Section 7, they, there is a consent that is required from the other parent in order to pay for that expense, unless, of course, it, it's imminent and it has to be, you know, something like a medical or child care for the, for the um, parent to, to go to work. Right. And so um, the calculation uh, formula, I say, I, I use the word formula, um, for mm -hmm. section seven, that's different, right, from, from how you calculate the, the other expense that Eva, I think, was talking about? Is mm -hmm. it different? What I was eight? talking about refers to table amount of child table support. Amount. That's the term. Mm -hmm. That money is meant to just equalize the everyday living costs yeah. for parents that have children. Mm -hmm. So that money can go to whatever the recipient, the child support recipient deems necessary. Usually it goes to their everyday bills, the grocery bill, their utilities, their rent or their mortgage. It doesn't have to be an expense that is directly associated with a child. It can be for their living expenses. Section seven expenses are directly related to a cost for the child. Mm -hmm. That oftentimes these costs are not everyday or common costs, but come up once in a while. And for one person to shoulder the burden of them, it may be too difficult or unmanageable. So that's why they would be split, typically proportionate to income between parents. Oh, that's a really great explanation. Okay. Oh, Eva, I should ask you one last question, which is important. How is child support enforced? So that's a really good question. So child support must be captured in a legal document. The main legal documents are a separation agreement or a court order, or you can have an arbitral award if you go to arbitration, right? Those are the three, three main legal documents. Mm -hmm. Once they're in, in a legal document, you have areas in which are ways in the law that you can enforce them usually the document depending on the document that you have that will dictate how you enforce it typically every document or every order whether it's a court order an arbitral order or a separation agreement says that the first step is either coming back to that forum or going to what's called the family responsibility office that's the part of the ministry of the attorney general that enforces child support orders. So I always tell people, in civil law, when one person owes someone else money, you sue them, right? Mm -hmm. If you're owed money, you sue them, you take them to court. Right. In family law, it's different. Mm -hmm. If you are owed money, typically you are allowed, as long as the documentation is done appropriately, you would file your documentation with the Family Responsibility Office and they would enforce it for you. So they have a number of powers under the law in which they enforce child support and ensure it's getting paid. Okay, so for our viewers, I will have a link to the, um, uh, to the website uh, on, for more mm -hmm. information on Family Responsibility Office. And finally, one last thing, do you guys have any like tools that you uh, suggest that recommend for people to do calculations or find out more information about child support? So there is a website called Cleo, C-L-E-O, and it's a great website with free legal information, if, especially if you're living in Ontario. So you can type in any legal term or topic and Cleo into Google and it will come up. Okay. It's not meant to be legal advice. It's meant to be legal information, right. but it can be really helpful. Um, another option is... I always recommend if you're going through the space to work with a legal professional at some point. You never want to be hopefully in a position where you are representing yourself in either negotiations or court because the even though it seems straightforward, the area about um, child support and income and how much time you're seeing your children can be complex. And so you want to be able to have some guidance while you're going through it. So on this note, I suppose um, there's always the alternative of, um, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, of um, limited scope retainers, right? Where you uh -huh. try, yeah, just kind of get a consultation or some coaching 
from family yeah. members. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I will also so set up the link. Uh, I believe there's a couple of websites, really great websites for, for directories um, for a listing of these uh, professionals. And what are you guys, do you guys use Divorce Mate? Um, I hear that a lot, uh, but I think they're for lawyers, right? Um, yeah. So what about my support calculator? Um, would that be a, a, something you would recommend? I think that's a that's a quick easy tool to use oh, to okay. um uh, to uh, find out the child support and plug it's in roughly. the numbers. So yes, roughly. roughly. Rem remember that there's also and when when it comes to income, right? And that's I think that's a topic in its own. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to what income we're plugging in, it's important because that is the, that is you know it's pretty simple when somebody is a T four employee and the notice of assessment only captures the employment income and we plug in the gross annual income and that's that it becomes much more complex when someone is self-employed or uh, is paying is getting paid through dividends or there's a blend or there's you know multiple streams of uh, of income uh, for that person so um why Eva was mentioning also the 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 legal advice is when those factors come into play, th th there needs to be some form of an understanding of first, what income we're plugging in. And then second, you know, how do we calculate the table amount? Because it may be simple for, for someone on T4 and they may just go by themselves, go online, find out the uh, amount and start it uh, on their own. But mm -hmm. it may be very complex uh, for someone who doesn't have a straightforward income. Yeah, I think one has to be careful sometimes when you find tools online that it, it's really a lot of times it's just for the very general or very simplistic scenarios. But I think uh, I see more often than not that people, uh, the, the real life cases are usually more complicated. <laughs> than, mm -hmm. So I, I, I think I would also like to um, uh, just make a recommendation here that if you don't want to get a, a lawyer on, say, full retainer, at least, you know, try to get someone to seek a consultation. Uh, or some legal advice uh, and again i'm going to have these uh, links for everyone in the description box below